our calculus we say that uh, it is unlike our arithmetic part calculus plays an important role all engineering field in production in uh, transportation and uh, even in our uh, civil areas in civil department say for example if you want to construct uh, one water tank with a square base and vertical walls vertical wall with the least material maximum capacity how to construct that or in architecture they will tell how to fix one window with rectangular frame surmounted by semicircle perimeter is given with that given perimeter we have to construct like this so that maximum light may be admitted for all these things unless we know calculus part we cannot do anything therefore we have to understand what is calculus and how we are applying that that and all therefore even if it is difficult we have to make our mind to accept and we have to learn it in our calculus part we have two major part one is differential calculus and integral calculus differential calculus and integral calculus in differential calculus we have in differential calculus we have basic results how we are finding different formula differentials partial differentiation total differentiation etc and here in our differentiation basic part partial differentiation etc for all these thing we have applications applications our applications are mainly with tangents on normal maxima minima errors and approximations and maximum minima even in our total derivatives even in our partial derivatives also we do problems using our maxima minima problem that is to one variable two variable three variable more number of variables we introduce and we can able to find out that applications now we just think about that basic part how we are going to relate our calculus or how we are going to enter into that subject that is that calculus mainly based with the limits limit as delta x tends to 0 delta y by delta x is called dy by dx this what we call the rate of change of y with respect to x rate of change this y is called the dependent variable and this x is called independent variable we always differentiate with respect to the independent variable only remember that when you write dy by dx or dy by dt when you write rate of change of y with respect to time like that we say when you simply write dy ds dr dv etc like that this and all what we call differentials these things are not related to any of the variable this we cannot say that dy the change is not because of t or r or s like that we don't tell for example suppose if we drop one small stone in a pond we see that number of ripples like this as time increases the radius of the circular patch that goes on increases goes on increases but it is not possible to find at one stage what is the radius because before you see that that where that stone is dropped that will disappear the first circle will disappear second circle will disappear at only at one position we can able to see only one circle but if we know calculus the rate at which it is expanding the rate at which the radius is radius is increasing we can able to find out da da by dt that is rate of change of area with respect to time 
this is with respect to area with respect to time this is differentiation but whereas this dy ds dr dv that and all differential just changes how say for example we are given a gold block like this length breadth height when this gold block is given to different people different people will measure that and they will tell different length different breadth different heights this is because this is because the instrument that they are using the wrong handling of the instrument parallax error etc like that and if one man is giving l is 25 the other man give l is 25.01 cm or meter or kilometer like that so when this uh, variation is here 0.01 is change the change is not because of the person who is measuring because this remains the same person to person we are giving different answers and this change we call dl just change this we call differentials so we have that uh, in height or in breadth everywhere if errors are there we write dl db db dh etc like that they are all changes not because of time as time increases even then the block remains the same but whereas suppose you have a balloon you are pumping air is pumped inside as time increases the surface area increases as time increases volume of this air inside that it is increased in that case we write dv by dt ds by dt etc like this therefore this is differentiation and this is differentials there is a lot of difference between these two so this differentials we use to calculate errors those errors are not because of this particular concept only like that we cannot tell and there is no question of rectifying that and only thing is we can say that this much error has happened that's all this is what we do in our differential part and uh, next we think of partial differentiation when we apply partial differentiation <coughs> when y is a function of a single variable y is a function of single variable this is what we call the dependent variable this is independent variable y is a function of a single variable then we write simply dy by dx is equal to we call f dash of x first derivative but suppose if u is a function of two or more number of variables then the derivative of this u we can able to calculate with respect to x or with respect to y or both when you write ux we call this as do u by do x we call that means the partial derivative of u with respect to x we treat that y as a constant we treat y as a constant similarly we uy will be do u by do y like this we write so there is difference between dy by dx and do u by do x the do u by do x whenever we see like this u must be definitely more than more number of independent variable or more than one independent variable then only we can use our ordinary derivative partial derivatives this is ordinary derivative partial derivative for all these things the base is limits <coughs> this is a basic formula limit as delta x tends to 0 delta y by delta x is called dy by dx this is our basic part now we just derive one or two derivations how to find out dy by dx for a constant for algebraic functions trigonometric functions etc like that for example if you want to send one rocket to one of the planet the rocket first that uh, takes revolves about the earth with the maximum speed and suddenly it leaves at one point and reaches this particular place the required place if that particular point it is missed suppose here itself that leaves means it will go to some other place only it will not reach that place therefore the tangentially it moves therefore we should know the slope of this tangent where the particle should leave the orbit 
if it is leaving the orbit in the exact position directly it will reach that to required point so maximum we are using our calculus part let it be now delta x tends to 0 we write delta y by delta x is called our dy by dx now we have three important results here when y is equal to u plus v where u and v are functions of x u v are functions of x then we have the formula dy by dx is equal to du by dx plus dv by dx this is one basic formula now we give this because suppose there are two functions y is equal to sin x plus z e power x then how to find dy by dx means take first function differentiate take second function differentiate add them that's all so like that any number of addition we can able to go on do this this can be extended to any number of additions number two when y is equal to uv we call product rule that product need not be only two products maybe three products or four products or five products any number of products we can able to do it is like that then dy by dx will be equal to u into dv by dx plus v into du by dx this is our second result that we are using suppose if it is uvw y is equal to u v w you can treat this as u and v w apply that and again for v w you apply again or any time we can take dy by dx is equal to keep any two functions as it is keep the derivative of the third one for example v w as it is du by dx plus then here i differentiated u then u w as it is dv by dx then u v as it is d w by dx etc like that therefore keep two functions as it is differentiate the third one this is our product rule once again now more than three products four products five products six product means applying like that it is a tedious job in that case we take log and then we proceed even here itself we can take log and we can do that but normally when more than three products are there we take logarithm similarly powers sometimes we will get like this y is equal to x power x like that sin x power x cos x power x all these cases we take log and then we proceed therefore one two number three when y is equal to u by v this is what we call quotient rule numerator by denominator numerator by denominator if it is like that our dy by dx the formula is denominator square denominator d by dx of numerator minus numerator d by dx of denominator like that we write so this formula we apply here also once again we take for this y taking log also we can able to do but there exists a formula like this we can use the this okay now we just to take one or two simple examples and then we start let me take tends to a x power n minus a power n divided by x minus a the rule is n a power n minus 1 this is one formula it comes under limit <coughs> x power n minus a power n by x minus a limit extends to a n a power n minus 1 this is one for y suppose if you take let y is equal to x power n we want to find dy by dx for this for any function when it is like that to find the rate of change only if there is a change we can able to find out the rate of change for that what we do let delta x be a change in x we just give a small change in x and delta y be the corresponding change be the corresponding change in y because as x changes automatically our y part also will change therefore in that case we have y plus delta y is equal to x plus delta x whole power n your y becomes y plus delta y your x becomes because every x is increased by delta x this is result 1 this is result 2 now we take 2 minus 1 that will be y plus delta y minus y is equal to x plus delta x whole power n 
minus x power n this this minus this and this minus this so this y will cancel and divide by delta x delta y by delta x is equal to x plus delta x whole power n minus x power n divided by delta x now why we divide by delta x because all the changes because of this delta x only delta x change happened in x so this is change in y change in y is delta y x plus delta x whole power n minus x power n we are finding the rate of change delta y by delta x power 1 how much like that delta x we divide now when you apply the limit <coughs> limit as delta x tends to 0 delta y by delta x that part will become x plus delta x whole power n minus x power n divided by delta x i write add on x and subtract on x add on x and subtract on x now i see this formula i apply this so that this will become dy by dx <coughs> this will be n a power n minus 1 n a power n minus 1 therefore here n x power n minus 1 therefore from today we have to remember that d by dx of x power n is equal to n x power n minus 1 therefore differentiation of x power n with respect to x is n x power n minus 1 so this n may be an integer or fraction or whatever be that rational fraction whatever be that for all the things the formula is true for example if you want to find d by dx of x power 7 we write here 7 x power 6 like this we write d by dx of x power 3 by 2 fraction if you write or rational number 3 by 2 then the answer is 3 by 2 x power 1 by 2 3 by 2 minus 1 1 by 2 therefore even if it is under root we apply the same formula therefore differentiation of x power n integer fraction positive integer negative integer for all this thing is this true d by dx of for example d by dx of x power minus 2 suppose then the answer will be minus 2 x power minus 3 like this we write therefore this is our part now what will happen if it is at constant suppose if y is equal to a constant what is your dy by dx actually there is no x here because there is no x we cannot write change in x so what i write is when y is equal to c after changing x to delta x y corresponding change only will be there for example i can write here for understanding 0x 0 times x is 0 only so let delta x be a change in x therefore delta y be the corresponding change the word corresponding is important corresponding change in y therefore we get y plus delta y is c plus now we find this is 1 this is 2 1 minus 2 gives delta y is equal to c minus c is equal to 0 delta y is equal to 0 because this is already 0 this will go this is already 0 this will go c minus c also 0 therefore rate of change delta y by delta x is also 0 as limit delta x tends to 0 delta y by delta x is equal to 0 dy by dx is equal to 0 therefore when y is a constant dy by dx becomes a 0 because there is no x there and the problem becomes same similarly we can able to find out for other functions sine function exponential function logarithmic function for all these things we can able to derive